Have you ever wondered what happens to the garbage you throw away? 25 to 30 trucks full of garbage, including your trash, end up at the Glenbrook landfill site every day. Dennis Guy and the rest of the waste management team are working hard to ensure that your garbage is being managed safely and responsibly. Join us as we learn how the City of Hamilton's only open and operating landfill takes care of our trash. This is Daily Web TV. Today I'm here speaking with Dennis from Waste Management of City of Hamilton. Dennis, can you tell me how many trucks a day are coming in for a dump run? Well, you know, we send, uh, in terms of tractor trailer loads, like the big long trailers, about 25 to 30 trucks up there a day. That's a lot of garbage. It is a lot of garbage, <laughs> definitely. Now, we, we talk about all this garbage and we spoke before about how it's all placed out going in to the tipping floor. I can only imagine that with all that garbage and, and waste sitting around, a lot of gas is going to be starting to accumulate. How does the landfill deal with that? Well, you know, it's funny because the landfill does indeed have gas. <laughs> But <clears throat> what it is, is when organic material mixes and it's breaking down, methane is released. Mm -hmm. Methane being a greenhouse gas is certainly something that we don't want to go up into the atmosphere. So we've installed a gas collection system, basically dug into the landfill, placed pipes all around that'll collect that gas. It's extracted then from the material and then it's converted into electricity. Electricity as in for homes? Yeah, right? absolutely. Pumped right back into the grid and about 2,100 homes worth of electricity. 2,100 yeah. homes? Yeah, basically the size of Bimbrook right now. The landfill's creating gas, we're converting it into electricity, and people in Bimbrook are flipping on the switch. Oh, it's very green. Green energy, absolutely. Green energy. Yeah. So we have our windy days and the litter that's blowing around. What happens on those rainy days? Is it turning into a big swampy mess? A couple things. Uh, you know, from a surface point of view, when it rains and that runoff, because we're talking right 30 to 32 meters high in the air, you definitely have a slope on the side running off. And what we have are called retention ponds. And so little ponds around the landfill site that the water's directed into where it can sit. And then it's tested on a regular basis to see what's in it mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it is, you know, running off of garbage. And so if it's not clean, it's then pumped to the Woodward Avenue uh, sewage treatment plant. And from a, a more deep point of view, the rain that percolates through the landfill site is what's called leachate. And it's a lot like a, um, making coffee, right? So you have, okay. you have your grinds, you have your water, and as the water percolates through, then you have a nice cup of coffee. Now, I wouldn't say it's a nice <laughs> cup of leachate, but <clears throat> because of that, we also have a leachate collection system, much like the gas collection system. And then the pipes that are through there will collect the water and again, pump to Woodward Avenue uh, sewage treatment plant for, for treatment before it goes any further. So your leachate system, it's just filtering the water through the waste? No, the water filters through the waste naturally when it rains and uh -huh. things like that. The leachate system collects that uh, soup, that juice, right, and then sends it out for treatment. So what happens to the waste once you, it's gone through its system? Well, you know, and then it's basically compacted and left in this big mound called a landfill. So over time, after the waste has been in there, natural compaction occurs and the waste sinks a little bit. And so we're able to, in this case, we talked about cell one being closed before, peel it back and put some more in because since 1980, it's compacted down. You're saying that it composts down. Are we talking about the waste that's turning into a soil? Is well, you don't really find that that happens. Uh, well, that's one of the misconceptions. You think, okay, well, we're burying it, it's compacting. But what happens is when, uh, especially our organic waste is wrapped in a plastic bag, the plastic bag seals it and seals any air from getting in. And without oxygen, the compost process can't happen. So it's still sitting there in a plastic bag years okay. later. Right now, we have 12 closed landfills that we know of. And those are landfills that were previously used but have been capped off. Uh, just the one open one that we have in Glanbrook. And as a municipality, we have a responsibility to monitor the gases and things like that and maintain them for up to 100 years. So as residents, we pay for these things for a long time. And we have a, a couple closed landfills now that have been put to good use and soccer pitches have been put on them. Great. Dennis, where can somebody go to get more information? Well, the best bet would be check out the website at hamilton.ca slash waste or give us a call 905-546-CITY. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Tracy. For more information on Hamilton's landfill, check out the website. I'm Tracy Bazot, and you've been watching Daily Web TV.